Hello, welcome to Geek Lunch Meet. I'm your host, Chris. As usual, this is part two of building Ravel's Mandalorian Razorcrest model kit. Um, if you haven't seen part one yet, uh, do check that out. If you like what you saw, um, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. You'd help out the channel a great deal. Thank you very much. So this is what we're currently building. Um, so say in part one, we went through what was in the box basically a bit of an unboxing see all the bits and pieces that we had so it's a very nice kit lots of nice detail on it um what i thought i'd start off with is just going through the uh, sort of very bare basics of some of the tools you're going to be needing uh, for putting together uh, kits like this um, this is probably very much um not so much a beginner's guide to modeling but just some of the stuff that i've got um I, you know i've done modeling for years never done it like on a massive scale i mean you know there, there are youtube channels out there where people are uh, putting in lights and scratch building things and 3d printing stuff these days and all sorts of things this is sort of much more basic um sort of guide to modeling so um first of all you're going to need something to remove the uh, parts of the kit from the sprues you're going to need a pair of um side cutters um they're angled so that you can get the blade right in and snip uh, I believe they're called the gates where the actual part of the model uh, touches the sprue um, so you're going to need a sharp pair of those all of these um, tools I'm going to show you um, only a couple of quid to buy uh, very cheap available in all hobby shops or online eBay Amazon anything like that um, say always support your local model shop if you can so yeah some side cutters essential in a similar vein um, this is an exacto knife any sort of modeling knife um, just useful uh, for you know scraping down uh, the sides if you've still got uh, bits of the gate left or just in you know any general sort of modeling when you need to cut something if you're cutting uh, sheets of styrene or plastic uh, things like that always helpful to have a decent knife sharp blade make sure it's uh, always sharp obviously be safe with those um, and then next thing you want to do is uh, any sanding down if you've got bits of stubborn gate or just little bits left um, I use these um, like flexible sanding sticks very similar to um uh, what you might find uh, for doing people's nails with like emery boards um and they go in uh, you know go down from very coarse and then the other side is slightly less coarse and then they go down to this one feels almost completely smooth like there's nothing there but you can uh, you know work your way down them and end up with a completely smooth finish um yeah uh, absolutely invaluable or also i mean obviously uh, sheets of um sandpaper a uh, very fine grit as well i've got um so you can get all of these incredibly cheaply once you've got the parts of your kit um all sanded down and ready to stick together obviously you need some glue um to me a uh, extra thin uh, cement is what i use gone are the days when i was a kid you know with your tubes of glue that just squirted out everywhere this stuff is very thin um screw top got its own little brush um yeah just goes on exactly where you want it you can actually you, you put two pieces together and then you can just run um the brush down a uh, capillary action draws the glue in and this stuff basically welds uh the two bits together so i would yeah definitely recommend ultra thin cement if the parts of the kit um haven't gone together quite um you know as neatly as you'd hoped and there's gaps some sort of filler um i've currently got this humble model filler it's probably a bit too thick um for things like the razor crest if you're just you know when you're sticking plastic parts together and you've got very thin gaps um you probably want something a little thinner um that you can just get in even if especially if it's one that, um, that's water soluble and you can actually just wet your finger just smooth it right in just literally all you want to do is fill up the gap let it dry and then uh, obviously once once it's dried and filled any um obviously remainder that is uh, standing proud uh, obviously back in uh, with your sanding uh, implements and just get it nice uh, and flat so literally you've only got the filler uh, in the join um what can help with when applying the filler is um and some sort of modeling tools these ones are probably too big you probably want smaller um little ones either metal or plastic ones uh, these are sort of proper uh, full-size sculpting ones but things like the one that the the sort of the, the, the very rounded edge or the sort of almost spoon sort of small spoon edges um, are quite good just for um you know, smearing the filler into the gaps that you need um but yeah that's probably a, a most sort of basic set um setup that you'll need um as i say all of this stuff only a couple of quid each um and with that the uh the force is telling me that a model building and commentary 
is coming up. This is the way. So the first thing I do with any model kit is wash it in warm soapy water. Uh, this gets rid of any uh, mould release agents um, they may have used in the factory. Um, didn't bother filming this, just took a photo that you need to see me doing the washing up. Um, if that is your kink, you can check out the video where I restored the uh, original Kenner vintage um, Lemmy Falcon. There's lots of uh, lots of washing up going on in there. Uh, but onto some actual uh, model making, and um, this is not going to be uh, too long. Um, it's you know this is model making you know 101, um, quite basic. Uh, use the side cutters to remove uh, any of the parts um, that you are going to be uh, fitting together. Uh, in the background there is one of the, also one of the most important model making tools, uh, a cup of tea uh, in an appropriate Grogu mug uh, there. Uh, being English, um, I think it's the law, you have to have a cup of tea within at least uh, like three foot of yourself at any given time and that is the correct colour of tea, um, quite dark. Uh, the colour of He-Man's face I believe uh, is that shade. Um, but I digress, uh, yeah, as you can see, still cutting off uh, this, uh, the top, main top section of the whole of the razor crest and as always uh, missed one of the gates, so just deal with that as well and there you go, it comes out quite easily. So take one of your uh, sanding uh, blocks and uh, just remove any parts of the gate that are left. Um, it looks like I'm being um sort of manhandling it quite a lot there but um they're very fine sanding uh very uh, very fine grit on those so you know it, it's hardly removing anything at all um as you can see just carrying on doing all the different parts just get it all nice and flat That's the top part completely uh, sanded down there, um, ready for any test fit it. Um, always a good idea um, just to check uh, that the parts will go together. Um, obviously these will be sprayed separately first. Um, but yeah, just check there's no obvious defects or gaps or anything that it's all going to fit together nicely. As you can see, that looks pretty good. Uh, it's a good uh, tight fit, and uh, that gives an indication of what the Razor Crest is going to look like um, when it's finished. Uh, moving on to the uh, engine sections, exactly the same thing. Um, just remove all the parts with the side cutters. Uh, the Razor Crest engines uh, always remind me of the uh, of the pod racers from the Phantom Menace, uh, sort of very oversized uh, for the the actual sort of size of the ship. Um, and again, just sand down uh, any parts that need it. Again, just sand down any parts that need it. And then uh, again, another test fitting, just make sure that all goes together. Then onto the actual gluing with the, uh, with the uh, Tamiya extra thin glue um, that I use. Just uh, applying it around the edges here. Um, this bit's not so bad because this is all going to be covered up inside, inside the engine. So just sort of a livery, uh, putting it all on around the edges. And then in it goes into the groove. You can see the instructions in the background. As I say, I'm not going to go into too much detail. It's all quite straightforward. Uh, just follow the instructions on this bit. Um, there's little notches that uh, show that these only go in uh, one way. And then what you can do so with this thin glue, you can just put it on the back like that. And to say capillary action draws the glue uh, into the into the small uh, gaps 
and welds the plastic together. Then we do exactly the same with the other end of the uh, engine. Uh, some people have been uh, putting lights in their razor crests. They uh, uh, drill out all of these little bits and cut them out um, so that you can see the engine lights coming through. Um, it's not really anything I've ever done. Um, electronics uh, isn't really my bag, not something I've ever really looked at. And to be honest, um, it does look nice, I must admit, when models are lit up. But at the end of the day, how often am I going to go around? Uh, turning all the lights on to show if you're if you're building them for um, yeah competitions and things like that to enter then um, or you know if electronics is something you enjoy doing um, then yeah give it a go but um, uh, yeah just f for me I'd rather just a, a static model um, it, it works fine. small glue inside there just to make sure that's secure and then just glue on the uh, on the main edges all the parts that are going to touch together on the top part of the engine This type of thin glue so much easier than the big thick tubes of stuff we had when I was building model kits as a kid, which would squirt everywhere and go everywhere and then we try to wipe it off. Um, it, by, you know, it's very nature would sort of melt the plastic and leave you with uh, all blemishes and, and things. And then this just pops on the top, just line it up uh, into the grooves. So the kit does go together very well. Um, and there you go. So here you can see all the uh, sorted subsections that I've uh, built the model into that I think are, uh, is going to be best uh, to paint it in this way so I can get to all the uh, different bits and pieces. Um, I haven't uh, done the cockpit yet, the interior of the cockpit, um, I'm going to do that separately and the landing gear isn't here, I'll do that separately as well. What I have done is uh, these are the uh, interior pieces um, of the car, uh, sort of main cargo bay. I've stuck a few bits, the uh, the magnetic like sort of claws on here that hold the uh, carbon freezing uh, blocks in place. Um, that is um, the uh, first ever Star Wars toilet as well there, by the way. That's the refresher on board the Razor Crest. Uh, yeah, which was the first time we saw a lavatory in Star Wars, uh, strangely. So yeah, these parts will be sprayed uh, matte black uh, for the interior and then they'll get, uh, it's a sort of greeny, uh, greyish blue um, sort of colour on top as well, amongst other detailing um so the rest of all of this will get a gloss black undercoat um which is uh, apparently the best from doing a bit of research if you're going to paint something chrome you spray it gloss black first obviously thoroughly let that dry and then put the chrome on the top one thing i did uh, forget to film was um the kit doesn't need much filler at all um there are only very few small parts on the side here of the uh, of the engines, um, you might just be able to see um, just along the uh, some of uh, the gap, the sort of main gap. I just put a little bit of filler in, um, wiped most of it off, uh, let it dry, um, and sanded it down. So yeah, very very small amounts of filling uh, needed for this kit. Um, the way it goes together, which is good. Now I had hoped in this video to actually um, show you the uh, priming in gloss black and possibly even then getting the first coat of chrome on. Unfortunately at the moment um, I haven't really got anywhere indoors that I can actually do um, much spraying so I'm reliant on doing it um, out on my patio. Unfortunately living in England um, I have to go with well, what the weather's doing uh, and unfortunately last weekend when I was going to do this uh, on the Saturday it was blowing a gale all day and then on Sunday uh, it chucked it down with rain all day as it's wont to do here uh, in this country. So I thought instead of waiting any longer to get this video out I would just put this out as this part of, uh, of just sort of assembling um, the sub sections um, and then in part three we'll actually get on to the fun stuff uh, of priming all this and getting the first coat of uh, chrome on so we can really begin to see what it looks like. 
and hopefully weather permitting, uh, I can get out there, do some spraying, and get part three of Building Ravel's Razor Crest up uh, quite shortly. Uh, thanks for watching, and until next time, eat geek and be merry.